to change the world. It connects us. It helps keep us informed. It solves real world problems we face. We, we challenge, challenge you to design, design an app. An app that is going to tackle or solve a problem. In your school or local community. Think about who needs help in your life right now and what you care about. For example, maybe you could recycle more. Or that a local area could be put to better use. Is there a club or a society in your school that could be helping people more? Or a local charity that might benefit from your help? These are just a few examples of a big change you can make. You will be supported along the way with online feedback, a boot camp and in-school visits. And your ideas will be celebrated in front of the UK's technology leaders at the AWS London Summit in May. Submit your app idea into the competition and guess what? Amazon Web Services will build the winning idea. It will be out there in the world being used by your community. You will have created, designed, and delivered an app. That's, That's huge. huge! By taking part in this program, you can get into IT and make real social change. So, what are you waiting for? Can you hear me okay? Yeah? Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon, students. Again, nice to see you here. It's a, it's a real pleasure, real honor to have you among us again at the summit. We told you we'll finish at the summit, right? One year ago, and here we are. And, uh, and thank you, you know, uh, uh, in the audience, you know, to take, to take the time to join us uh, today. I'm Sonia Morty. I'm uh, heading the marketing for Amazon Web Services in the UK and Ireland. And um, we've been basically running the AWS Get IT program for the past year. Uh, I, we created this video so that we're not going to spend too much time explaining the context of the, of the initiative because we really want to just focus on the kids. We've got two last projects uh, for them to present and we need to find, uh, to select the, the, the final uh, team who's going to win and have their application created, deployed and maintained by AWS. So as uh, you could have seen in the, in the videos, we worked with over 5,400 children. We, we um, selected 36 schools to be part of it. Then at the end, we had 130 projects submitted. And uh, obviously, our goal is to encourage more girls to consider a career in technology. So we were, we were really targeted in terms of the schools that we are working for, uh, working with a little bit for as well. Um, and, uh, and today, today we had the semi-final. I'm just coming out of there and it was just, it was brilliant and it was so tough. It was so tough because the those, those students are so creative and, uh, and they came up with fantastic ideas, you know, to help support their community or their schools. Uh, so it was really, really difficult. But now, We've got those two final, uh, final uh, teams, and um, I've got judges to, uh, who are going to join me on stage, and they are, they are going to have the very difficult task you know, to vote for the final, um, uh, the final team. Before I invite the, the students to come on stage, I'm going to introduce you to the judges uh, individually. So the first judge is going to be Tiffany uh, Hall from uh, Cancer U uh, Research UK. She's the CIO there. And Tiffany was voted CIO of the year at the AWS, oh no, at the Women in IT Awards <laughs> in January. Thank you for being with us, Tiffany. Um, I now would like to call Tom Reed. 
Tomri, the Chief Digital and Information Officer at the uh, Ministry of Justice. If you attended the keynote this morning, you will recognize uh, Tom. He was part of the, uh, of the keynote. You presented uh, very well. Thank you for being with us, Tom. Thank you. Uh, then I'd like to invite uh, Kerry Appleton Norman, partner and head of public sector cloud business at Deloitte. Thank you for being here with us, uh, Kerry. Deloitte are talking uh, with AWS to expand the program across the UK. Thank you for being with us. And, uh, and finally, obviously, we, uh, we are really honored to have Teresa Carlson joining us today. Teresa is the VP of Big Sector for AWS globally and a great advocate when it comes to working with children and uh, diversity. <laughs> thank you, thank you for being here. And, uh, and finally, we've got Matt Garman. Matt uh, is uh, our keynote speaker this morning, if you recognize him. And uh, again, a great advocate for everything that we do around diversity. Thank you for being with us, Matt. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Right, so now let's get started. We've got two teams who were selected. The first one, Rand Academy. And the name of the app is Cheetah Plana. So we received, as I say, 130 uh, projects. And this is a very interesting one. A lot of those projects were around you know, organizing your day and, uh, and becoming a little bit more efficient and also you know, therefore reducing the, the stress when it comes to the students. And I've attended the presentation earlier. It was absolutely fantastic. So please join me in welcoming the Ryan Academy on stage. <laughs> It's going to be on. Yeah? Okay, go ahead. I forgot my planner. I don't know where, what homework I've got today. Hello. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay. Are you tired? Oh, jeez. Uh, parents, are you tired of hearing this message? <laughs> Are you worried about your child not doing their, uh, re not revising, getting bad grades? Well, our app will put your mind at ease. Well, our app is here to help. We are the cheaters. I'm Amber. I'm Alex. I'm Chris. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Noah. <laughs> and I'm Noah. And I'm Eve. We are representing Wren Academy, which is a school in North London, and our aim is to make homework easier. We want our app to act as a digital planner or journal, so teachers can upload homework for students. Our current audience are the teachers, students and parents at Wren Academy. This may expand in the future as we want our app to be made configurable for different schools and situations. A study at Toronto High School showed over 50% of children do not complete their homework due to difficulties not understanding it. Closer to home at Wren Academy, 25% of all the negative behaviour watches are due to missing or incomplete homework. We want to help students stay on track with homework and revision, reducing the amount of detention students get. One in five people suffer from dyslexia, which you know which means in our year, roughly, 36 people have dyslexia. Oh, it's, um, oh, okay. Which means roughly in our year, 36 people have dyslexia, basically a whole other class. So we thought of some problems that we face with our current paper planner. Many of my put friends... Put it up to your mouth. Put it up to your mouth. Put the microphone up to your mouth further. So we can hear Many it. of my friends have spilled drinks over their planner, ruining it completely. They have had their little siblings scribble in it and destroy it. You might lose it or leave it at school. That means you can't do the homework which is due for tomorrow. You could even write the wrong homework down or misinterpret it. 
This means the wrong homework is completed. Um, we, we, all the problems we face at school, so we designed a mood board which shows what we face at school. For example, bad grades, anxiety, revising problems, time management, stress from tests, and detentions. So that's the problem. What's the solution? Why our app, of course. <laughs> Here are some of the key features of our app. You, teachers can upload homework with assignments, attachments, and anything needed to help the students get on with it. A homework and revision timetable will be generated each day to show the children what they should get done first and what can be left for later. Notifications um, are there, so people can use, so people are reminded if they've done their home learning or if they haven't. This, this feature is configurable. We have a school news feed, so you never miss out on the latest information. We have a uh, we have music lessons and meetings, uh, which means that you never miss out, of course. Uh, we can track attendance, so you know when you have reward trips, rewards and stuff like that. And we have a lunch menu, so you don't let, wait in line for awful stew or something. <laughs> Our app will be available on and offline, so you can do your homework anywhere and everywhere. It'll be eco-friendly, and we'll expand on this idea more later. It has tips and tricks, so you can get the best grades possible in those end of your exams. And it's accessible to everybody. It has a help and advice section, so if you're going through a hard time in your life, or you just need some, somewhere to go, you can have a look in our help and advice se section. And it's compatible with our school systems, such as a Sims, Behaviour Watch, and Office 365. And don't forget compatibility with Amazon's Alexa. Wait, did you say Amazon Alexa? Yes, that's right. For an example, Alexa, what homework has Eve got? Oh, no. Eve currently has maths, English, science, history, geography, Spanish, French, art, product design, and drama homework, all due by Thursday. Well, we all know what Eve's going to be doing when she gets home, don't we? Our current planners are made of paper and plastic. Over 1,200 of these are printed for our school alone. If our app became a reality and was used in many schools, not just our own, imagine how much less plastic and paper would be used. And if there was less paper needed, there's less longing, which means the habitat for animals would increase. Our generation is concerned about climate change, and if we can do something good for the environment, we should. We want our app to be accessible for everybody, especially focusing on people with dyslexia. We also want our app to have um, color, <laughs> color choices and... <clears throat> dyslexia is the most common learning disability which affects a person's learning. People with dyslexia can have trouble learning names, writing letters and figures, reading, writing words, difficulty planning, and confusing letters. We also had an idea of our avatars being animals, and you can dress them up. We also wanted them to be walking across the loading screen. This is the icon we, d we designed for our app. Now, it's all very well talking about how it will look. Let's talk about what we need to build it. So, these are the building blocks we think we require for our app. So, we have Amazon S3, simple storage service. We want our app to be available both on and offline, meaning we need to store all of that data somewhere, hence why we need Amazon S3. However, homework will update when the device is back online. 
We have Amazon EC2 and Am Amazon Web Services Lambda. So our, so our app can calculate and generate homework and revision timetables. It can also calculate the percentage of your attendance. Amazon S3 static website and Amazon light sale. So our app can be available without Wi-Fi or data. And Amazon Alexa, Lex and Polly for the voice recognition and text-to-speech capabilities so that our app is compatible and works with Amazon Alexa. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Do you have any questions? I have one. Well, thank you. I have one. I didn't understand your budget. What's your budget for this? Do you have a performa or a financial planner for this? <laughs> I don't know a lot about money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Judges, anybody else? Can I ask how hard do you think this is going to be made to? How hard will this be to maintain, and who's going to do your maintenance for you? Amazon. <laughs> um, I, I may have missed this, but what happens for children who don't have a phone or a tablet? Well, in our school, it's like part of the normal equipment list for everybody to have a tablet. So everybody has like maybe an iPad or a Samsung tablet. and even if they lose this tablet, they can still download the app on their phone, so they can always be able to do their homework. What sort of user testing did you do during the, the, the work so far? We have asked many people, including like family members and friends, if this app would be useful or w would be useful if they were still in school. And many of them said that it would definitely be useful because lots of people struggle, homework, struggle with homework. What do you think would be the hardest thing to get used to, given that you're used to a paper planner that would be hard if you had to switch over to the digital planner? Not breaking it. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have one more. Do you know how long that it will take you to develop this application? Uh, probably quite a long time, because yeah. it's quite complex. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you all. That was very good. Wonderful. That was great. Thank you very much. So we're just going to give you one minute to finalize the, the score, and uh, we're going to introduce the second uh, finalist to the stage. So the second finalist is Bishop uh, Stortford College with uh, Connect Hero. I mean, you can see again, you know, this is an app that is about helping the students. And here it's uh, for uh, students that have hearing disabilities. And the app is about, you know, making sure that not only they can hear the teacher, but obviously, uh, consequently, improve, you know, their, their results and their performance uh, at school. Uh, so if the judges are ready, yes, they are. We're going to call the team to the stage. Welcome. Hi, my name is Amy. I'm Millie. I'm Ibby. I'm Charlie. And I'm Zach. We're here representing Bishop Stortford College with our app idea of Connect Hero. Our app will help thousands of children worldwide. It turns speech into a written word. But more on that later. 
Hi, I'm Ibby Weldon, I'm 13 years old, and I have a 60% hearing loss. This makes it very difficult for me in school, as often I can't hear or lip read the teacher, and I feel like an outsider. It also, people also take it for granted that they can't hear anything and everything. There are lots of people like me that have the same problems, and sometimes even have it worse. There are 45,000 children under the age of 16 living in the UK who are, who are mildly to severely deaf. That's a lot of people, and all these thousands of children will be helped if our app is made. 2,000 children are born every year with hearing problems. This means that if our app is made now, then children in the future will be able to be just like other children, and they'll be able to have a full and enriching school experience. Imagine that you are a student in a classroom. The teacher turns around and says something extremely important, and you can't hear a single word that they're saying. This is when we came up with the solution of using a microphone. This would help the child excel in their education, as the microphone would help them uh, read and go back over what they've learned over time. This is how our app would work. The app would recognize when speech was said and turn the, that speech into text on your device's screen for the user to read. These are the processes behind it. First of all, we have the inputs of the app. First of all, we have three inputs, the, the AWS mobile hub, the microphone, and the keypad. The AWS mobile hub is a home page that would allow the app to use the device's features such as audio and photos. We chose the AWS Mobile Hub as it would allow us to incorporate audio into our app. The AWS Mobile Hub also allows the app to be used when the device isn't connected to mobile data or Wi-Fi. This is ideal as it allows it to be used where mobile data or Wi-Fi isn't necessarily available. The, key, the microphone is the next piece of input software. The, user, the microphone allows the user to input audio into the app allowing that speech to be turned into text on the device's screen. Next, we have the keypad. The keypad will allow the user to type important information into the app, like login information and file names. Next, we have the work done. The first piece of work done is the Amazon Polly. The Amazon Polly is a piece of software that would allow the app to recognize when speech is said. This is essential for our idea, as it needs to be able to recognize when speech is said in order for that speech to be turned into words on the device's screen. Next, we have the translate feature. Translate would allow the text to be in a different language to the language in which it was spoken in. This will be extremely useful for lessons involving multiple languages. Lastly, we have the save feature. The save feature would allow the user to save the recording they just produced to a file in the app. This is good for increased organization and it also allows the user to access and view the recorded information later on. Lastly and not leastly, we have the output software. Saving it is the work done, but where you save it is the output. We chose to save our information and data to the Amazon S3, which is simple storage. We chose the Amazon S3 over the DynamoDB or the Amazon Aurora because the, because the information we are saving isn't particularly complex or detailed. Then we, look, then we had to look at microphones that would be both intuitive and easy for the teacher to use. So we came up with a few. The, two close, the, uh, the one closest to me is a, um, is a simple clip on microphone that can be used every day. Then we have a microphone that can be put on a stand or held. This would be used in a lecture situation. Then the, fur the two furthest away from me are two tabletop microphones that can be used on the table if the lesson isn't that active. The point we're trying to get across to you is that anything that's a microphone will work because the software does all the important stuff. I'm going to be talking to you about how our app would look and how it could be used in an everyday situation. This is the sign-up screen. As you can see, there's a younger version and an older version for the varied language. The younger version would only have the main language on it, whereas the older language would have more than one language on it for language lessons. This is a sign-in. We designed the sign-in so that there's no personal information needed. This would allow more people to join up as there's no emails or credit card details. 
Here's the most important bit. This is the home page. The folders on the home page contain all the different lessons that you can store your speeches into. The settings can also the settings can be used to personalize your home screen, and it could also be used to connect the microphone to the device. But the bit that we're going to focus on now is the record se se setting. As you can see, where it says the homework is set for Friday, this is where the teacher will be speaking into the microphone, and it will show up on the screen. This will show up in real time, so that you won't have to have any delay for the speech to be translated onto here. This is also where it will have the setting or the, the function for you to save it into your folders. We are going to finish our presentation talking about further development and how our app can be extended in the future. The first way in which our app can be expanded and further growth is foreign languages. The first type of people we can help in expansion is EAL students, English as an additional language. These students may not fluently speak English or speak English at all, so this app would not only help them academically, but it will also help them learn English, which would also benefit the teacher. The second type of people we can help with the translate feature of our app is languages abroad. This includes people who have gone on holiday or on business trips, but don't speak the local language. This would not only help with conveying information, but it, all, but it would also be conveyed quickly and easily without mistakes or confusion. The next piece of further development we could use is revision help. We all know that revising the test can be really tricky. So if you can record it down, then you can revise it later on, so you can look at your notes. This would be very helpful. Another place that we could develop it further is for SEN pupils. This could be pupils with dyslexia or pupils that need help remembering. This is where the folders come in. People can look back at the folders and it can appear in text, so it's easier to read. Another way that we could develop our app is connecting it to the people's timetable so they would open straight onto the recording and they could save it to their designated folder. Uh, thank you for listening to our app. We hope you enjoyed learning about it. Do you have any questions? Do you have a budget for your application? The budget for our app would be solely what the user wants to pay for the microphone. So depending on how expensive that microphone is, they can choose how much they want to spend on the app. OK, and I'll ask you one more. What did you have? A, did you want to say anything on that? OK, good. And then the second thing, do you have you thought about how long? What's the time it's going to take you to develop this? Personally, I don't think it will take very long because it's quite simple design feet do like features in the app. Okay, okay, good. Can I ask how you'd launch this within the school? Please, can you repeat yeah, that? I'm wondering how you'd launch it within the school. How would we launch it within the school? How would you get people interested? So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we should prop we have a... Um, a website, so we could probably put it on the websites for our school. We also have a learning support at our school, and we know of several pupils in this school, in our prep school and senior school, who have hearing disabilities. And the learning support area, they can really like help advertise our app. Um, same question again for me. What sort of user testing have you done so far? User testing. So we set up a meeting with Mrs. Bridal, our head of learning support, to meet with those um, people with hearing disabilities. Unfortunately, this didn't, we, didn't, we didn't have time to do this. We have a very busy timetable. But we were planning on asking our questions and what type of questions we would ask to those people. Uh, we also do something similar with hearing doctors, where you're put into a booth, and then you have to do a similar thing with speech and text. Uh, firstly, just to say, I live in Bishop Stortford, but this won't uh, impact my vote. Um, <laughs> uh, secondly, um, I'm interested to know, how would you test it? As if, you, if you deployed it in one school or to some children, how would you test it to make sure it's actually useful before going bigger than that? Um, I think we should probably start with like one section of a school or just a couple of pupils 
to see how it goes for like a month or two, okay. just to okay. test it. Uh, you, you guys called out that there are a couple of different target uh, markets, whether it's dyslexia or hearing impaired. How did you decide on what the initial target market would be? Our initial target was people with hearing impairments or disabilities because we have a member in our group with one of those. So that was our main target audience and then as we continued to develop our idea, we thought how could we branch this out? How could we develop our app? What further updates could there be? And that's how it kind of led from there. Thank you very much. How cool was that, right? How hard your task is. <laughs> OK, so we're going to give the judges a few more minutes to finalize the scoring. And uh, then what's going to happen is they're not going to deliberate. We don't want anyone influencing the other, especially Tom Reed. Um, and they're going to hand over the scoring uh, sheets to my uh, two colleagues here. And then I'll invite the judges to leave the, um, uh, the stage. And I'll invite a teacher to come on stage and um, share a few uh, details around her experience working uh, with us around this program. So how are we doing? OK, good. Ladies, do you want to come this way? Thank you very much. So I think you can even you know, finish your uh, scoring um, off stage. I've got the next session starting in 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, my next guest, as I said, you know, is, a, is a, um, a teacher from a Townley Grammar School. Townley Grammar School has been working with us like from day one. We actually invited their, their students um, to help us build the first deck that we presented to them, the 30 uh, schools. So we start with the customer at uh, Amazon. So we started with uh, their students and we, you know, we were trying to see what was going to resonate with them for the program to be very successful. And I remember we did like a, a lot of workshops and we came up with suggestions and uh, we were completely wrong. So thank God, you know, we did some user testing here. Uh, and uh, so I would like to invite Anna, Anna Sergeant, uh, to the stage and um, to do a quick fireside chat with me. Thank you, Anna. Hi, Anna. Hi. Do you want to have a seat? Thank you. Thank you for being us, uh, here with us. Uh, and I think that uh, you are here uh, with your students for the student track. I am. Thank you. Hi, Townley. Where are you? Just give us a wave. Thank you. So I've got a, a few questions um, uh, for you. So very briefly, I wanted to, you to share uh, your experience with the, with the audience. We received already like today, uh, a lot of uh, the attendees actually approached me and my team and asked, hey, how can I, I've got, a, I've got a daughter, she's in year eight or year seven, and I want her school to be part of the program. Yes. And um, before, before we do that, you know, I think it would be great if you share your experience uh, you know, with, with the audience. So my first, uh, my first question for you would be, so what have your students gained by you know, being part of the program? Well, the first thing I did was I spoke to my year eights uh, yesterday and I asked them their feedback because they're my customers. And um, the positivity that they came back with in terms of the participation in the program, they liked the creativity, they loved the fact that they could actually go off and explore and look at problem solving and actually come up with a solution to problems that they identified in the wider world. Um, one of my students today said it felt like being in a real job, which I think is just testament to the structure of the program. That's great. 
And uh, if you remember, um, uh, one of the AWS um, managers earlier uh, mentioned actually that you know being part well pe the students by working in this app is actually give them a view of how it's going to be like like if they were having um, like if they were selecting like a, a career in uh, in technology because we do a lot uh, of these things. Uh, my second question for you would be uh, about the highlight. So what has been the highlight not only for your students but also for you as a teacher? My high, the highlight for me personally has been watching the students grow. They really grow in their confidence, in presentation skills, um, seeing the passion that they have, um, and also in terms of looking and considering a career in STEM. They've really enjoyed actually realizing that actually there is a, a place for them in computing or another STEM uh, industry. So they've really enjoyed it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. And uh, my uh, my last question uh, for you. So just coming back to what I was uh, talking about earlier, you know, we are getting a lot more requests now. You know, to uh, to uh, um, enter more schools in the in the program. So what would be your your main recommendation uh, to that school? What do you think they need to think about? Because I know it's not it's not always easy. And uh, the first one of the first uh, uh, challenges that uh, we we've, we've been facing is we ask the students to actually miss school and uh, several times you know during the year uh, of course it's not to miss school to have fun and do something completely like not edu uh, educational but it's uh, it's not always easy for for the schools so what do you think uh, the school should be aware of before entering the program um to make sure that they give the students enough time because they it's quite intensive they have to do a lot of research the presentations um so i mean we built it into the curriculum for year eight. So we actually included it as a standard set of lessons. But you could run it as an after school program, which in some ways might be more beneficial for some students that might like to work in a smaller classroom based activity. But um, definitely one I would say to have the opportunity to work with an industry giant like Amazon and to experience some feedback from um, you know, all the AWS ambassadors. I mean, you know, for students, that's a, that's a really good opportunity. So definitely, I would say if you get, if you can, and your department can support, because it does take time, that, you know, definitely I would say I would recommend taking it on. Fantastic, thank you. And one thing I would mention is, uh, you know, I mentioned the Women in IT Awards um, earlier. And uh, uh, when uh, AWS has been a premium, like a sponsor for the past three years, and one thing that we launched uh, this year is the mentoring program as part of this initiative. So if you, you or your organization want to be part of the program, you know, just, just go and visit the AWS Village in the Expo Hall, and, uh, and you'll be able to, to sign up your interest, either as an organization, you know, to become ambassadors or help us scale the program or you can uh, if you are a female leader we are looking for mentors and the thing that we're going to do with your school next year with the year eight this year but year nine next year is that they're going to be part of that mentoring uh, program and we're going to invite them once a quarter to meet uh, not even like uh, AWS leaders but uh, tech leaders from any uh, type of uh, uh, industries and, uh, and share, share you know, their, um, um, their view on uh, what they need to be and give them a lot of insight for their career. So don't hesitate to visit uh, the village. Now I'm looking around and I'm looking for my colleagues and I'm hoping that we have a winning team. So who wants to sing a song now? <laughs> or, take or take questions from the floor. Yeah. Is there any questions in the audience? We've done a fantastic job. Is there anything else, Anne, um, that uh, you think people should be aware of when it comes to the program? I would definitely say make sure your students have um, the opportunity to research because doing background research on um, especially further developments on any app ideas look at what's currently out on the market because a lot of the students have some fantastic ideas but you know they needed to actually do their research so i would really thoroughly recommend research yeah and that means that they also need to be 
they really need to have someone to help them. Yes. So it can't be uh, just like a, a program that is, it needs to be driven by someone within the school, right? You definitely need a project manager and that's where you see your leaders start emerging from, from, your, from your teams. And also bug your AWS ambassador as well. That, you know, that's a great opportunity to actually get some really decent feedback there. Great, thank you very much and I really appreciate you joining us, thank you. So I'd like to call the judges back to the stage. So the five judges back to the stage. We have the winning team. This is, this is really important. This is, this is one year of work with the students. Finalized. Yeah, if you don't mind standing here and then one will uh, welcome the students. They will. So thank you very much. As I said, Teresa Carlson is a great advocate when it comes to diversity, and uh, I attended some of the uh, projects that she led, some of the events that she led for women within AWS, with, uh, in IT, and uh, it's my great pleasure to ask uh, Teresa to announce the winner. It's the Academy Award. It is the Academy yeah. Award. Thank you. Awesome. They, were both, they did such an amazing job. Can we give them just another big, big round of applause? they both were so this is really hard okay drum roll please and the winner of this year's get AWS get IT award is Bishop Storford College Congratulations, congratulations. I think the judges want to congratulate you as well. I'd like to call the Rhine Academy as well to the stage. Congratulate like them as well. Can you move a bit this way? of the AWS Get IT program for 2018. And, Thank you. And can I say something else? I just want to say you guys all did an amazing job, both of you. So don't give up on that application, OK? Just because you got runner up, you still did amazing. And we need to make sure that we're helping you develop that application. So I'm going to make sure my team is in your school helping you. And of course, you guys, for sure, give these guys a